my channel I hope you all are doing well today we are going to talk about we are going to talk about ways to improve your mental health I hope you guys are ready let's jump straight into it you know the drill like comment subscribe hit the bell for notifications of when I upload and let's get straight into it so first let's talk about what is mental health I know I've talked about this in previous videos but for this instance I believe we need to mention it again so mental health includes our emotional psychological and social well-being it affects how we think feel and act it helps determine how we handle stress relate to others and make healthy choices mental health is important at every stage of life from childhood to adolescence on through adulthood. So why is mental health so important? It helps you cope with stress of life, be physically healthy, have a good relationship, make meaningful contributions to your community, work productively, and realize your full potential. And when I start talking about these different ways you can use to help improve your mental health, know that it's going to be different for everyone so not everything is going to work for everyone everyone's routine boost their positive mental attitude is going to be different so i will be listing different websites in the description box down below where they list different activities you can do of different ways to boost that positive mental health so you can look at it and try different activities and see what works for you and what doesn't because that is the best way to figure out your coping skills what works for you now let's jump into these different ways so the first one is to talk about it talk to people who have similar interests as you who are going to support and reassure you your support system talk about how you're feeling because when you keep it in that is just going to keep hurting you emotionally mentally and you're just going to go downhill i know it personally because i've always been the type to not talk about how i'm feeling and i still go through that it is a hard thing to do because you don't want to feel like a burden on someone but you need to find at least one or two people you can feel comfortable with going to because everyone needs somebody to talk to you just do who you have similar interests with that you can bond with and talk to and get excited over like music i know i get excited when i get to talk to my aussie friend because we can talk about music and just oh it's so exciting i love it but we can also talk about other things that aren't music and it's just so fun to have just somebody you can talk to that has similar interests with you as you. It's just so relieving. The next one is to get enough sleep. A lot of people don't realize how important sleep is and how much it affects your mood when you're not getting enough sleep. I do believe the cycle starts with sleep and when you're not getting enough sleep that's when you start to tumble down the negative mental health mindset that that circle that that you can't break that unbreakable circle you just start tumbling down the hill and I think it starts with sleep because when you're not getting enough sleep you're groggy you're you're not yourself you're, you're exhausted and, and then you're not thinking straight because you're so tired your body is slow and you're not doing the things the way you normally would if you were fully rested and that starts to really mess with you and then that takes a toll on your mental health you start thinking oh well I can't do this I'm not good enough I'm messing up 
I knew I couldn't do this. And then it just starts going down. You start tumbling and then you can't break it because an event affects your thoughts, affects your feelings. So an event's not getting enough sleep and then you mess up, things don't go right, that affects your thoughts. You start thinking you can't do things right, you're not good enough, and then that brings you down. That makes you upset and worthless and you start feeling all those negative feelings. So remember that. I believe it starts with sleep. I honestly do. But again, disclaimer, that is my opinion, that it starts with sleep. But getting enough sleep is very, very important. Next is staying active. This boosts your self-esteem and helps sleep and you to feel better. And it keeps the brain and other organs healthy, vital organs healthy. It also releases endorphins to help boost your mood, reducing the feeling of stress. So staying active is such a great thing for your mental health. Always ask for help if things are feeling too much for you and you believe you feel you cannot cope with it. Go to your support group, your support network. Get help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. We all need to do it. You are not alone. And always remember that it is okay. We all have to do it. We all cannot carry the weight of the world 24-7, 365 days a year. That's just not how we're built. Take a break. De-stress yourself. Give yourself some me time. Give yourself a break at work. Change of scenery or change of pace. Just give yourself a break from what is going on at the moment. And then when you're ready to get back at it, you are refreshed and ready to view it from a different side of the yourself. You are refreshed and you can see it straight and clearly than what you were before because you were so stressed out and just anxious. When you get that break and de-stress, you see things different. The next one is do something you're good at. Enjoying yourself, de-stressing. Enjoying yourself de-stresses you and boosts your mood. I know, I know like when I'm doing my makeup to film, it really distresses me, it calms me down, and also boosts my mood because it makes me feel good about myself and also makes me feel good that the, the look I end up with because it, it makes me feel like I achieved something. That I, I did something, like I did that, that looks good. And then I show my mom and she'll give me a compliment or tell me if it looks good or not. So do something you're good at. Stay positive. Find a balance between positive and negative emotions. This does not mean that you can't feel sadness or anger. We need to experience it. Navigate difficult situations, but don't let it consume you because that is when we end up on the other side of mental health, to the dark side of it. We need to be on the positive side. That's what we're doing here today. Positive side, you guys. Just like I always say, when you're going through something hard, you gotta go through it. You gotta allow yourself, like, grief. You gotta allow yourself to experience all the stages of grief. Whatever stages you may go through, you gotta experience it to get to acceptance. Don't stay in each stage too long, but allow yourself to experience that because only then will you be able to get to acceptance. It's just the same as negative emotions. You gotta experience negative emotions to deal with difficult situations, to handle different things that are thrown your way. But when it comes to that, do not stay in those emotions too long. Practice gratitude. Write down things that you are grateful for. Thank and that you are grateful and thankful for. And when you are down and you only see pain, grab that journal and remember all that you have that you can remind yourself, oh yeah, you know what? I have all this. It'll open yourself up to remembering what you do have. Because I think that is where we get lost because we feel like we have nothing. So writing down what we have 
what we're thankful for, what, what we're grateful for, what, what it is that, that we care about most. And seeing that when we're in that darkness, I think that'll bring us back. So I think writing down gratitude could be really great practice to getting us to the positive side of our mental health. Of course, developing coping skills, which is kind of what we're doing right now, but also I've talked about coping skills in the past, like distraction, which would be uh, like music, doing things you're good at, reading, going for a walk, journaling, just watching TV, you know, just distracting you from whatever's going on until you're ready to go at it. And things like observe, just observe what's going on around you. Don't describe it, just feel what's going on around you. And notice it with all five senses. Things like that. One mindfully, when you're going to bed, just focus on going to bed. Don't be on your phone when you're trying to go to sleep. Just lay there, maybe meditate, deep breathe, just relax. Maybe put on a calming app, you know. But just be there, one mindfully, trying to sleep. Um, there's a lot of DBT coping skills. I have a video I just put out recently that I did about coping ahead, which I will link in the description box down below. And in the description box of that video, I put in a link to all of the DBT coping skills. So definitely go take a look at those because they are so important. They've helped me so much. Learning a new skill... It gives you pride and achievement. I think that could be very helpful. I know when I started learning how to paint my nails, I was like pride at just painting my nails and not getting it all over my skin, you know, and flooding my cuticles. But then I started to do nail art, you know, and I just kept going with it. And now my mom has me doing her nails and I'm doing like night skies and stuff. It's so fun and I love it. And then so it goes back to that doing something you're good at and that de-stresses you and boosts your mood but then gives you that pride and achievement. So it all ends up combining into one to boost your mood and put you in that positive mindset, that positive side of mental health. So let's kind of talk about Ways to relax, which promotes and boosts positive well-being and distressing. And is also kind of a form of distraction if we are talking about coping skills. So listening to music is a big form of de-stressing and boosting that positive mentality, that positive emotions. It, music does so much to the brain and, and just a person in general it's incredible if you ever want to look it up it, it's incredible what music does to people um, that is my number one go-to when I need to be lifted up is my music rock and roll TV video games yoga meditation Tai Chi mindfulness managing anxiety and negative thought gardening's one being around your pets deep breathing meditation journaling. Um, I do believe through journaling we become self-aware and get to empty our minds and fears, concerns, and anxieties. So I do believe that journaling is very important, which I journal all the time. I, I love it and it's so freeing. So if you don't journal, I'd say definitely give it a try because it sometimes if I feel like I, I can't go to anybody, um, journaling is definitely the, the outlet. And so is my poetry. And you can join groups. I mean, groups for like self-help or meditation groups, groups of activities you enjoy. There's a lot of groups out there you can enjoy to go meet people that are have similar interests as you or go through similar things as you. Let's talk about problem solving for a minute. So understanding, so the best way to problem solve first is to understand your thoughts and feelings. The next one is to plan in advance the situations that may cause stress for you. 
if this is an area you definitely want to pay more attention to that video I'm linking in the description box down below about coping ahead definitely watch that video because this is what I'm talking about planning in advance I have a trip coming up where I'm worried about my PTSD and anxiety coming through my depression so I'm planning on different avenues I can take to make sure I'm all set in case any type of situation arises and I need to handle my stresses. So if I'm having an episode, we will have our car there. I can go in there and sit and breathe. My mom will be my go-to person that I can talk to. She'll walk me through the woods and just listen. I'll have my dad as my second person to talk to because the next one I would suggest is to ID two people you can go to. You should definitely have two people instead of one in case one of them is busy. And also to plan for crisis situations, period. And give it to people so they know what to do in case that situation arises. So those are quite important, I think, and I do believe that they definitely have a lot to do with creating that positive mindset. The next one is developing a sense of meaning and purpose in life. I believe this is very important because if you don't have a, a sense of meaning or purpose in life, you will get lost and feel like you have nothing and why are you here? And you don't wanna be in that situation. You will be on the other side of positive mental health and that's not where we want you to be. I know that was my big issue the past two years when I ended up on disability because ever since I graduated in 2012 and started working, work became my identity. I was a hard worker, I was working all the time, and that was like my purpose in life. So, and then of course, like I found other purposes in life with dance and uh, choreography and choreographing, um, wrestling. But when my health got so bad, got too bad and putting me on disability, I lost that sense of purpose and felt that. Like, why am I here? And then being told that what I'm going through is all in my head and then also told that I'm going to be like that forever, all the pain and, and nausea and, and I thought, why? Why would I want to go through that for the rest of my life when I'm only, I think at the time I was like only 24. Uh, so when I ended up on disability, I found YouTube, which became a big purpose in my life. It gave me a an outlet and something to look forward to and something fun in my life and you know, you got to find something like that. Something that gives you that sense of excitement and, you know, reason and purpose. Like, you know, you're doing something you, you enjoy, that you feel good about, things like that. Goals are important. It also gives you purpose. Having a goal each day. Uh, for a long time, I used to write down, I think I'm going to start doing this again, but a goal for each day. Routines are really good for keeping it positive because each time you check off a part of your routine, that's like a success, an achievement you did. So it's giving you like excitement. It's making you like, yeah, pride. You did something. So it's giving you success. And then go outside. It's vitamin D and it's a powerful mood booster. So going outside is a very big thing that you want to do. So those are a few different ways you can boost your mood. Again, I will list more different websites that you can check out to view other activities you can do to boost your mood and find what works for you. Again, what works for you may not work for other people. So find what works for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. And let me know if you have anything you want to add to this list that you think might help some other people. 
I would love to hear it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe and well, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.